a quick one here. Um, just as I was going through the chapter, uh, when they're talking about this discrimination and generalization and, you know, how an animal could do one or the other, um, the thought in my mind was, how does this relate to anything? How does this actually matter? Where does this matter? So I wanted to give you guys an, an example of, um, well, how, you know, in a, in a more realistic situation, both generalization and discrimination play a role. So I'm going to join, I'm going to actually sort of preempt some of your developmental psychology. I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into the future uh, because there's a guy named Jean Piaget who's very important in the developmental world. Um, and there's this notion that he borrows from previous people about accommodation versus assimilation, which um, is generalization and discrimination. So I'm going to walk you through this story for two reasons. One, to make you understand that, that this, there's relevance to these concepts, uh, but also to kind of take this, you know, we're talking about learning literally like in a lab situation. And I want to bring it a little bit more to the real world, something I'll do once or twice as we go through here. And so here's the situation I want you to think about. Um, imagining, imagine there's a new child in the world and it's just learning about the world. And um, imagine, you know, this child is in, in a house, maybe a strange house that it's never been in. The family goes to visit somebody and inside that house is one of these things. Okay. We're going to live in a world, by the way, just a step back, where all cats are nice. I'm going to pretend all cats are nice. There's no cats that are going to attack this little kid or whatever, although I know in reality cats are variable. Uh, but we're going to pretend all cats are nice. Okay, and so this child is in this home, and maybe the owner of the home says, go, go see the cat. Go scratch him behind the ears. He'll like that or something. And so this, this kid goes over and sees this cat and maybe scratches him behind the ears and pets him a little bit. And maybe the cat purrs and cuddles into the child and, and it's a nice positive great experience and the, and the kid's really happy about it cool a little while later it sees this in a different place now you'll notice this is not the exact same thing it saw before it's a different color maybe different size you know it's similar in some ways it's different in other ways are you thinking generalization well that is what assimilation is so the idea for piaget was okay it learned something about this cat in the first in, in instance and so if, if it assumes this is like that, if it says this is another one of those, then it can also assume that the behaviors I did over here, the responses that I emitted um, that were so nice in this context, maybe they're smart responses to emit over here. And so maybe he goes up to this cat and pets him and scratches him behind the ears and maybe this cat loves it too and purrs and cuddles up and everything's great. Okay, um, so the child had generalized its learning from here to there. And then maybe there's another cat, right? And again, a little different in a number of ways, looks a little different, different paint job, maybe a different size, etc. But again, the first step the child might make is to generalize what it's learned, assume this is just like those. Um, so that is, it assimilates it into this category that it's forming called cat. And, and that's what Piaget says is going on here. It's learning about a more general category of being called cat and how to respond to it. And so when it sees this one now, it maybe pets it and scratches it behind the ears and maybe this cat's very happy and cuddles and everything's great, okay? And so notice how generalization now is allowing the child to, to recognize what belongs in the same category and then it can just, the things it learns based on some of these instances, it can now extend to others. So that learning can go beyond, um, but it can go too far. So let's assume that this child is now walking on a maybe nature little trail with, with the family and is the family paying attention? Maybe not. And maybe the child sees this. Um, if any of you don't know what this is, this is a skunk. Uh, it looks a lot like a cat though, doesn't it? You know, it has the same basic body shape, same basic size, four legs, a tail, little head on the front, little ears. Um, if the child begins by thinking that is a cat, and if it goes over then and says, I'm going to pet it and scratch it behind the ears, 
it may learn very quickly this is not a cat, <laughs> that those behaviors are not good behaviors for this animal. In fact, probably if it starts going towards it, one of two things are going to happen. One, a parent is going to come screaming out of whatever and grab the kid and pull it away. Um, or two, it will go over and try to scratch this thing and this thing will turn around and spray horrible smelling stuff all over it very different reactions here. And now I'm, I'm, I'm talking about consequences a little bit. So I'm almost sneaking into the next part we're going to learn about operant conditioning. But for now, I don't want to focus on that. I just want you to see how generalization early on allows it to, to bring other cats, other instances of cats into the category and learn how to respond to it. But it also every now and then has to discriminate. It has to say, oh, when I've tried to bring that into the cat category, that didn't work. This I have to be. I have to learn a different set of responses to this one uh, than I had to these guys. Um, so this is where I have to do discrimination, and I have to say these guys are all sort of the same. This guy's different. Okay, and so that's how those two core processes of generalization and discrimination can be so important in terms of us, you know, being able to extend the behaviors we're learning, but also to learn where the bounds of those categories are. Um, and, you know, the Pavlovian stuff you've read about shows you how you can do experiments to test, you know, how much animals uh, generalize and how much they discriminate. Uh, but um, this is a more real world kind of example where you see those processes at play, you know, helping the child learn about the world. Cool. That's all I have to say for now. I just wanted to give you a little bit more context in which to think about generalization and discrimination because they seem like geeky little scientific concepts. And, you know, I thought by seeing it in, in this world, you'd, you'd see the relevance a little better. That's it.